please join me in welcoming your host, Moitza Mavitz. Thank you, dear ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. We are slowly, slowly closing the doors for our afternoon session to begin. And it's lovely to, to have you back. And um, in this part of the day, we will, uh, we will meet entrepreneurs who have succeeded against all odds in these difficult times, in times of COVID, and who are preparing for a sustainable and digital recovery. All the 2020 SME Assembly, which took place online, we heard the stories of some European entrepreneurs who succeeded against all odds in sectors badly affected by the pandemic. These stories were told in a video that we screened throughout the Assembly on one of our channels. One year on, in conversation with our hosts, we will hear how they have fared since we first met them a year ago what support they received and what their ambitions and hopes are for the future. Our special guests will be presented, our entrepreneurs, by my colleague, Marieta Novak, full of energy. Marieta is back, hop, hop. <laughs> and the stage is yours. Yeah, lipo zdravo, dobar dan. Good afternoon also from my side. I will be hosting this session here on site with help of my online colleague, Gerardo de Lutzenberger. We are both from the International Association of Facilitators, where we support people to engage in fruitful dialogues across divides, across sectors, across interests. And with us, Joining in from Finland a bit later is going to be Raquel Benmergi, who is listening to the key ideas and insights and will present her visual summary a few times during this session. The main part is going to be the four stories of entrepreneurs from diverse angles of SME economy and we will predominantly hear how they have been faring this past year. They were featured already last year, they were super interesting, super engaging, and my experience also tells me that we just as human beings love listening to stories. This is how we make sense of life, of our contributions, of our challenges and solutions that we find. So this is usually a super engaging uh, um, session. And to make it even more engaging, we are going to ask you also for your insights and ideas in a little bit structured way. So I will first give instructions after which we will get to hear the stories. And uh, your input is also important because we have policymakers also here in the session, and uh, one of them, Birgit Weidel, head of unit SME DigiGrow, will at the very end of the session respond to what she will have heard from you uh, as the audience online and on-site, and of course for, from the invited speakers. So we have today four stories, three themes that I'm going to introduce soon, and two participants, communities online and on-site that we are going to weave together during the session. So this is a hybrid event. Um, again, we are here prototyping the future. Most likely we are going to have more of that in our context. So this is a good way to grow our digital and green as well capacities as uh, we are convening here in Porto Roche. So now first, this is going to be instruction only for online participants. Super welcome, just take your seats, there's plenty of room still for those who are now joining from lunch. For our online participants who are joining from a number of countries in Europe and more broadly, those of you who were born either on January, February, March or April, you are invited to listen within the stories, especially for the innovative and creative elements that emerge. Now, just have this specific focus 
and later we will want to hear back what were the elements that you have found that can be good reminders for us as well. Those born from May to August, what digital and green breakthroughs emerged through the stories, and those born September, October, November, December, what government support in the stories may be replicable and sustainable. Once again, these are invitations for the online audience, not for you here. You would, you would just re reset your minds from the last minute uh, because you are going to get a fresh uh, invitation. And this is going to be structured a little bit differently because this will help us later in uh, mm, structuring conversations so that can be as productive as possible. So, our idea is that those who are sitting here on the left, there are actually quite, uh, rather few because, you know, every, everyone takes the easy, less energy-consuming way and uh, sits there, but anyway, we'll prototype those. Those of you who are sitting to the left, you are going to listen for this, the same first listening arc, innovative and creative elements in the story. Let's say to the left and this middle uh, four lines, four rows as well. Those of you who are on the floor, parterre, on the floor, the same elevation as myself, you are going to listen to the digital and green and or green breakthroughs in the stories. Welcome, just join, take, take your seat, you're going to be updated quite soon. All good. And those on the right-hand side, so this larger group is going to listen specifically for government support that you will have identified in the stories that might be repli replicable also in other contexts um, and or hopefully sustainable. So please have these mental notes in mind because afterwards you will share insights with a few colleagues and then we will gather your input in an effective way for the entire community, both online and offline. So I think you have a good enough framework and I trust uh, there is enough uh, uh, understanding in the room that will um, help us move forward afterwards. And now I would love to invite our speakers of whom Two will be joining online and two will be joining uh, on site here. So, um, with us here in the room are joining uh, two ladies. The first one is Siliana Bozilova from the We Care Foundation in Bulgaria, a foundation that supports families with children left with no income due to the crisis. Welcome, Siliana, to the stage. And. Oh, just, just take a seat first, I'm going to introduce okay. everyone and then we begin. So, just, uh, so that we have the entire speakers community and know uh, who is with us and, and then I will guide us one by one. Also um, joining us here is Ursula Laurincic, CEO and co-founder of Hopalai, a reader app supporting children with reading difficulties such as dyslexia. Welcome, <laughs> Ursula. And then we have an online participant, Søren Lex, co-founder and a plasticpreneur from Austria. During COVID, they switched to developing face shields from plastic waste. Well, welcome to you, Søren. And we have also Annika Björkholm, head of marketing of Swipe Guide, company that creates next generation infrastructure software designing crucial information for the millennial workforce. So, welcome everyone, this is our, our four storytellers, and uh, let's give the word first to Søren Lex, co-founder of Plasticpreneur. So, Søren, you have about four minutes to just remind us what your um, 
passionate passion in business, what your core business is, and mainly then, how have you fared in this COVID times, personally and professionally? And again, to the audience, take your mental notes of the listening arcs that you have been uh, provided with beforehand. Over to you, Søren. Hello, I am Søren, as mentioned, the CEO and co-founder of Plasticpreneur based in Austria, and I'm excited to share a little bit of our story in the last year. Um, we are a company which is developing and producing simple recycling machines and technologies to turn plastic waste into new objects um, to enable the start of local businesses basically anywhere in the world. Um, our company is quite young. We started in the beginning of 2020, highly motivated uh, to conquer the world. Um, before COVID basically hit us um, right at the beginning of 2020 and we were sort of in a shock and didn't really know um, what to do and, and how to go forward because obviously all our plans how to enter the market and so on um, were shaken and basically not possible to do. So I think the first thing we really learned during that time was the team we are having that we are really, we were back then a team of four, uh, soon then five people um, which were highly passionate about what we're doing. And we didn't stop thinking about ways how we can uh, move out of this, of this challenge. And basically came up then with the solution to quickly adapt to the circumstances and produce uh, personal protective equipment, which is now being produced in more than 10, uh, more than 10 countries around the world still up today. Um, so after having this team, which was a very, very important um, thing for us during that crucial time, I think the next thing we learned is that it's very important to be globally connected, um, which are we here, of course, in this assembly as well, but to also be able to act locally. And we realized that with our technology and our products, we're exactly doing this. We're providing tools for everybody to act locally, but we also um, connecting customers around the world and project partners around the world to learn from each other. We have or we managed to, to, shipped, uh, to ship our products to more than 55 countries during this past year, um, which of course was also quite a challenge um, during global lockdowns to move physical things from one place to another, not only with customs in, in African or Asian countries where we had no idea about, but also to actually find somebody who ships it and who flies there. Um, but the, the third learning, I think, during that time between our having the team and being globally connected was to have a strong support network around you. Of course, on the governmental side, we received some funds for, for developing and using our time in R&D, um, but to also have um, yeah, partners in the supply chain you can count on, um, which provides with the material. We all know at the moment it's a shortage on a lot of materials on the market, um, but we also realize that it's important to also put time and effort into the relationships we have with our networks around us. And that basically the feeling is that together um, we can go through these times and these things. Um, and that's maybe the, the fourth thing we learned um, is that we are all in this together. Um, and that's maybe an interesting thing that with this pandemic, it doesn't matter where in the world you are, um, we are in this together. Um, and that was the feeling on the personal side as well on the business side that we felt together with customers, which are more than customers because through this process we grew onto each other and we're going through these steps together. So that we really have the, the feeling that it connected all of us very closely and that if something delays or something is not coming, which maybe before COVID would have been a huge problem and emails written not so nicely or something, suddenly it's okay, we're all human, we're all trying to go through this. So for us, I think the learning in this last year was really to count on your team, to count on being connected globally, um, to have strong support networks around you um, and um, that we're all in this together. Thanks. Thank you so much, Søren. And uh, the same question now to Siliana Bojilova from We Care Foundation in Bulgaria, foundation that supports families with children left with no income due to the crisis. How have you fared personally and professionally, you and your team, in this last year? 
Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Um, for us, it was uh, business as usual because uh, what we care does is basically help families that were left with no income due to the COVID crisis. So um, it didn't change much for us. We were able to continue uh, doing what we did uh, when we kicked off uh, the foundation in last March. The only change was basically that donations stopped for the past uh, two months. Um, and this is uh, totally normal because uh, most of people uh, resume their way of, of living prior to, to COVID and go back to work and start living their normal lives again. Uh, so the hype uh, of uh, changing uh, people, individuals and communities is not the same as it was in the beginning. But uh, this is not something that uh, discourages us. We are going to focus in the coming year into meeting um, kids and people from um, disadvantages environment with local entrepreneurs to show them that there is a way of working together. There is a, a future in front of them and the crisis will, will be over really soon if we uh, put our efforts together to, to solve it. Um, and uh, yes, basically what uh, we care proved is possible is actually the motto of the SME Assembly this year is togetherness um, and um, <laughs> of course I forgot that right now. Um, togetherness and resilience equals recovery. So yes, we were resilient and we still are. Yes, we work together towards um, showing young generations because they're the future of Europe that uh, a future is a brighter future is coming and so we have no choice we will of course succeed so yes thank you so much Siliana and uh, uh, the word now to Ursula Laurencic CEO and co-founder of Hopalai a reader app supporting children with reading difficulties such as dyslexia share how you fared as, uh, as, as you yourself and as your team. I will start with a question and to complicate things, I have a PowerPoint, okay. So I will start with a question to you. Try to remember a moment when you had a feeling that you're failing. When your coworkers or maybe your boss were making you feel you're never gonna succeed, that you just don't have what it takes. Now try to imagine you feel like that at work every day for months and months. And you can't change this job because this is not a job. It's school. And you're seven years old. Kids who struggle with learning to read feel exactly this way. You know, reading is this um, amazing, complex cognitive capacity that we just um, see strings of symbols and we hear them in our head as words. Um, it, and uh, when we are learning kids to read, we have to follow the pathways that brain is taking while it's learning. My name is Ursula and uh, Yes, I'm a co-founder and CEO of, uh, of Kobe. What we do is we invent, design and develop tools for dyslexic kids. Our flagship product is a specialized e-reader that just helps kids to read. When... Oh my gosh, I lost myself. <laughs> so our, uh, we use special techniques that are not even so complicated, but they are sort of, we call them a dyslexia hacks, because uh, they allow the brain to make certain connections faster. The pandemic caught my startup in our first year. So we were just about to submit our grant application to the Slovenian Enterprise Fund, and the lockdown happened. Um, and uh, how we reacted was we adjusted all our activities, we started to innovate, and we uh, learned a lot. So we figured out that kids got really tired of learning from screens. So we adjusted our method and started publishing books. We published five titles, um, six, of, six is coming up. We predicted quite accurately that massive uh, knowledge gaps, skill gaps, are going to happen because of the lockdown, and we developed two new digital products, released them to the Slovenian educational community for free. We made new alliances, 
with the FEDIS uh, Spanish Dyslexia Association. Uh, we formed a really great alliance that is just this week going to the next level and hopefully we will reach children in Latin America as well. Uh, we touched US market. So uh, we are currently learning in Adino program, pre-accelerator -accelerate, pre lab in Boston, and learning from uh, the experts that are best in the ad tech field. So it was really intense. We were giving lectures, we were homeschooling our own kids. Um, we, were, we got all sick with COVID, and we did get the grant of the Slovenian Enterprise Fund. So we persevered. You know, we want to make reading a happy experience for every child. So our mission is that no child should feel a failure while they're waiting for their special education services. Our vision is special education that is so accessible that it can be integrated in every classroom. My focus in coming year is to secure funds so we can keep on doing what we're uh, good at. We will be boosting our uh, commercial activities, looking for grant opportunities, and potentially also reaching out to venture capital. I feel this is a moment of um, unprecedented possibilities. Education will never be quite the same. And we want to do everything in our power to contribute that it becomes better, more mindful, and more inclusive. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ursula. And now to our online speaker, Annika Björkholm, head of marketing of Swipe Guide, a company that creates next generation instruction software designing crucial information for the millennial workforce. How has been your journey and your team's journey in this last year? Yeah, actually, um, I will tell you more about that in a moment. Uh, as you so rightly pointed out, SwipeGuide is indeed a business business software company. We're founded back in 2016, and we empower frontline teams, uh, especially in manufacturing, uh, with radically human instructions and checklists. Uh, and we do this in order for them to reduce errors and waste uh, in their production processes. Um, and um, we're actually based here in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, but we really see ourselves as born global uh, since we didn't start in one market, but actually we have users across uh, currently 93 countries all around the world. Um, and uh, to mention some of our customers, uh, we're working with uh, Heineken, Coca-Cola, PepsiCo and ABB. So really large multinationals, although we're uh, pretty small ourselves. Um, so during the pandemic, actually, uh, it was pretty much business as usual for, for us as well, because uh, we've always been digital first, uh, with uh, around 99% of our uh, customer meetings uh, have been online. Uh, and we also have some fully remote team members. So during the pandemic, our go-to-market strategy and tactics have uh, actually stayed uh, the same as before. However, at the beginning of 2020, uh, when the technology and innovation budgets of our target buyers were slashed, uh, we had really tough decisions to make uh, as a company regarding our team. Uh, so as a small company with uh, back then 28 uh, full-time employees, we had to reduce our headcount to 18, uh, which is a lot. Uh, so, so the company culture uh, especially took a, took a huge uh, hit because of this. And the remaining team members uh, had a massive amount of work uh, on their shoulders, which of course added to the pressure. And uh, what really hit us personally as founders uh, were the personal impacts of those decisions. So people losing their visas and the personal emotions connected with that as well, of course. Um, and on the other hand, uh, it has really also brought us back to that lean startup mentality of doing more with less uh, and also setting the right priorities. So it was a really tough year for us, but resilience is really in the blood uh, of Swipe Guide, and we really see ourselves at the Davids in the market of very, very heavily funded North American Goliaths. Um, and although it was a tough year, uh, we've also had, had a very exciting year. 
So uh, we really see that there's uh, been a huge growth in awareness of digital transformation in manufacturing, um, and that has increased massively. Uh, and we also actually, as a company, raised a new uh, VC funding round of 5 million euros uh, in April this year, uh, which has helped us grow the team uh, back up again and further expand into new markets. Um, also, actually, we've developed a very open attitude uh, towards uh, working uh, remote. So currently, 20% of our team is fully remote, and the majority has been working from basically anywhere in the world in the past year, whether that's the beach in Ibiza or family in Austrian mountains or permanently from Spain. Uh, we really see that working from a different setting uh, helps fuel creativity and innovation in a completely different way. So we really recommend our team members to try to work from a new place, uh, if only possible. And however, we are a hybrid organization, uh, so we find it very important that people also can personally connect through the physical hubs uh, that we're connected to. And uh, well, uh, luckily our business is still booming uh, today. So currently we're at 33 full-time employees, uh, tw 29 of us uh, spread across Europe and another four in the US and Mexico. And actually we uh, uh, opened an office in Minneapolis in uh, the US last week. Uh, so that's uh, quite exciting news. Uh, and looking at the government-backed government uh, uh, support that we got during COVID, uh, we got a government-backed loan uh, during the COVID pandemic, uh, during the first lockdown. Uh, and uh, basically what we see is that even though we are one Europe, um, yeah, SME businesses are limited in their growth uh, because we cannot have uh, any European on our payroll. So we need to incorporate it in every country uh, and uh, use expensive payrolling companies to make this work. Uh, and um, yeah, policy and approach on a European level could really fix this according to us. So uh, we see that there's a lot of untapped intellectual capital that we can't currently tap into due to these restrictions. Um, and also what we would like to see more is uh, more subsidized loans and funds for specifically startups and scale-ups, because now everything looks like it's for startups and scale-ups. So it kind of, it really looks like it's there, but uh, it should always still be backed by banks uh, and banks actually don't want to take that risk. Uh, so so those are, that's pretty much the overview of uh, uh, the goods and the bads of the pandemic that we saw it. And also basically, um, yeah, what we see is currently lacking. So yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Annika and all the storytellers. A big applause for for your uh, resilience, togetherness, and entrepreneurial spirit. And uh, now I welcome to the stage Fabrice Le Sachet, chairman and co-founder of IRA Group, for just a couple of comments of Fabrice, what you have heard. And IRA is the largest originator and trader of African environmental certificates, active in four markets, carbon, biodiversity, renewables, and water. So this is now sort of a comment on our um, bouquet of storytellers. A couple of minutes to you. I don't know if it's a, a comment, but uh, I have always a great pleasure to uh, hear other entrepreneurs. These are people that are passionate that wants to fix things, to move things, not, I don't say to change the world, but why not, to change the world a little bit too. And their success is their merits. They work hard, they have the ideas, they find solutions, but their success is not only their merits, it's also the environment. And if we are here all together, and I uh, have a bounce back on what said uh, Anika, it's to improve the regulation, to ease the act of entrepreneur, to make sure that these uh, small size companies become medium sized companies. And maybe one day, for the one who wants, they can grow in Europe. It's always Amazing to me that in the top 50 uh, world tech companies, there is not a single one from Europe. It's amazing. We are a superpower. If we take all the macro 
figures. But we still have a big way to go to build this uh, capital market, to build this uh, environment, and to make sure that the regulation hit the smaller, hit the SMEs, and that the purpose of our presence too. We did so. We had this big success. Because why we speak today about the success of companies? Why today we have this problem of uh, labor market, of workforce, shortage of uh, workforce, we don't find the people, we have an uh, unemployment rate very low. Why? One year ago, one year and a half ago, everybody thought it will be a social tsunami. We'll have a 15, 20% unemployment rate. We hear that in France. And we break all the rules. We go beyond, beyond business as usual. We find solutions. In a few weeks, we were able, at least for France, but with the back the backing of Europe, we were able to channel 120 billion with the private banking uh, sector to SMEs. Because in France alone, the average amount that was loaned was 200,000 euros. So it's rich, the, the SMEs. We are capable of doing that. So now what we really want, and that would be my message, because also I'm speaking for Business Europe, I have to say it, uh, is that we provide an access to finance to these companies. And we all have the same goal to go to decarbonization. We know that we are not on the path for climate change. We know that we are not on the path, that we need to do more. But at the same time, we, we really want to have a strong economy. We want that things happen in Europe. And therefore, the only, not the only thing, but one of the key things we ask is to have a real test on the regulation, what it means for these companies and if this regulation will hit these companies. And we think it's not done correctly today. We think we can improve this. And this will be one of the key uh, message and key lobby point that Business uh, Europe will bring in the months uh, uh, to come. Because if we don't have a good impact assessment, then you can fight on all regulations or you can speak about all regulations. but. You always speak about a, a regulation that cannot be completely fixed because the, the foundations are not uh, so strong. I think my time has ended, so thank <laughs> you very much and thank you to these uh, entrepreneurs and lots of success for the, the next month. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Fabrice. <clears throat> wow, we have heard a lot. So let's pause now and turn to our graphic recorder, Raquel Benmergi, who has been visualizing live while listening to these inputs. So, Raquel, can you give us a, a bigger picture of what you have captured so far? Sure, thank you very much. Uh, it's been my pleasure to listen. Um, what I think that I see uh, coming together here is really the importance of people. So humans connecting to other uh, other humans, uh, people looking out for people with special needs, uh, entrepreneurs supporting each other, uh, cooperating, uh, not through competition, as well as uh, thinking about how their businesses can change and the opportunities that Unfor this unfortunate situation now provides us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Raquel. Uh, and uh, now it's time to hear your inputs and your feedback. And um, by the way, we started this session later than on uh, the schedule, so also other sessions are going to start with a bit of delay. Um, so you are super welcome to uh, stay here for a while and uh, of course now it's this exciting moment usually people really love this break times lunch times because they can connect they can talk you know they find somebody who's doing something similar or very different but still uh, being faced with similar challenges that really in many ways connect us so um, now I will first uh, give invitation for the online community so all of you who are joining us uh, online, I invite you to open the breakout session 
on your uh, um, on, on your swap card app on the platform through which you are joining, you will find on the left bottom side corner um, a link to click on, and then you go and join a um, breakout session that has the same name as the listening arc that you've been listening for. And for all of you here, let's turn to your neighbor. So uh, ideally, you have been listening to a similar arc. So those of you here on the left, it's more at the back, um, you've been listening to the innovative and creative elements, those all on the floor for digital and green breakthroughs, and uh, those there to the right on, um, in the cinematographic positions, up, higher up. What government support have you noticed? And it can be government support either on a local, regional, national, EU international level it can be interpreted quite broadly. So let's give you like um, about four minutes to interact and uh, then I'll give you instructions how to gather your feedback, how can we report back uh, together into our both online and online community. And let's do this in a fast, self-organizing way. Just turn to a few people around you, ideally three to four, and just start engaging. You might want to introduce yourself first, click the cards that you have on you, and it's a, usually a precious opportunity to meet somebody interesting. So, four or five minutes to this, and then we gather your inputs and uh, start wrapping up the session.
Thank you. Please start wrapping up your conversations and turn your attention towards the screen. And please please round up your conversations and grab a phone. Scan the QR code, code super quickly. And this will open the link to the Mentimeter, which is a fantastic platform to weave together online and on-site inputs. So um, the Mentimeter link opens three questions. The first one, which is about the innovative and creative elements. And those of you who are thinking of that, provide quickly an input. The others just um, submit an empty answer and go to the second page, which is digital and or green breakthroughs. And the third one, the third page is government support. So you need to do it sort of sequentially. But of course, you're welcome to offer insights to other listening arcs as well. Just, you know, make sense, whatever makes sense, given your conversations and your interest. But you need to click through in order to come to the correct Prompt, innovative, digital, government support. Let's do this super efficiently in two, three minutes so that you can then have still some time before um, the next sessions begin. And um, so give you a few moments of silence or very last uh, conversations. And uh, then we will hear the, and read through the most interesting inputs and uh, then also hear some feedback from um, our final speaker. I see some answers are already starting to uh, um, appear. So give you another minute very quickly, learning our digital and uh, resilience and effectiveness skills all together here live. Let's give it half a more minute. Uh -huh. So we see already the results appearing. What are the innovative and creative elements that you have heard? Um, adapting to digital, chance and adaptation, government support. We just heard there was actually none. Yeah, th this refer uh, refers to the second one. All good. We will later a little bit structure your responses. Help kids with disabilities through a mix between digital and paper support, international cooperation, working together, connected globally, act locally, working method change, employees all over the world working together for a better world, um, multinational teams, how to ship material good, goods in COVID times from software to tec technical solutions. Thank you. Let's go now to the second slide. Um, which is the digital and or green breakthroughs. And we have here help kids with dyslexia, work in a team worldwide, possible through digital support. Much about digital, but insufficient greenery. Yeah, thank you for that. We are taking this as sort of together, but of course there, there can be very different um, angles. Other platforms, partnership. The more digitalized a company is, the higher is the readiness for adapting to new situation. Thank you. And let's hear for this. On the third one, we already uh, heard that there was not that much of uh, government support, actually. So, but still, there were a few contributions. Gender mainstreamed policies, access to finance, networks, and innovation are fundamental. Government grants are good. Um, loans, entrepreneurship fund. What government support? We heard there was none, actually. Um, yeah, we all trust that there could be more, and that's why your input here is welcome throughout the conference, because the ecosystem is being, uh, in some way, 
on a first level design also here, at least ideas are being generated that can be then further um, reviewed and implemented. There are not many examples, room for growth, exactly. And need for more bank support for startups. Thank you, that was uh, super useful in a short and concise way. This is going to be, the platform is continuing to be open, so you're still wor welcome to um, add more insights if you are moved to do so. And uh, now we will hear again from, um, I think it comes Raquel first, yeah, our uh, graphic recorder. Oh, she's not online right now. Okay, so we did get a very good uh, insight before and her visual um, um, summary is going to be available in the platform also after the session. And these are usually really wonderful memory keepers for uh, when we look back and what were some of the golden nuggets from specific sessions. So with this, let's welcome to the stage Policymaker Birgit Weidel, head of unit SME, DG Grow. So, Birgit, super welcome here to the stage and applause for Birgit. So, as you were listening to the storytellers, but now also to the feedback of participants, like, oh, government support, there's not enough, there wasn't any, and so on and so forth. From your policymaker angle, what is being done to help uh, move um, this sector towards more uh, digital, green, sustainable practices? And yeah, and a broader uh, picture, over to you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, yeah, first, probably let me just uh, congratulate again all these uh, entrepreneurs because I think they have again shown uh, what was also mentioned today. I mean, it's really when we have societal problems, it's our entrepreneurs that we can count on. Uh, the crisis has shown this. Uh, for example, Søren <laughs> has, uh, has uh, got an ex uh, excellent example. Uh, they have been providing solutions uh, in the crisis, in the health crisis, uh, providing this protective material that has been needed by adapting his business and so on. So, um, but also all the other examples were extremely telling. It's always our entrepreneurs uh, that offer solutions for problems in our society. And I think this is something we have also heard from uh, Professor King, I think, today. Uh, about, uh, no, Professor Stephen, uh, on uh, a paradigm change. Uh, companies are not about profit making, but it's about uh, providing solutions for our society. So I think this is, and this is something that uh, struck me that much in the crisis because I think it became so apparent there. Uh, now, what are we doing to support them? Well, you probably know that we just before the crisis hit, two days before the pandemic was declared, the, the commission has uh, published an SME strategy um, and when it came out two days later, we learned, okay, there's a crisis. We were also wondering, oh my God, uh, is, our, is our strategy still relevant? Have we got it completely wrong? Are there now very different needs uh, that the companies have? And um, so we were also a bit in a shock, in a, in a state of shock and wondering, do we need to adapt? Do we need to change? Um, I think what we have seen is uh, that a lot of elements that we have provided in there uh, proved extremely relevant in the crisis. Um, and I have to say, governance support, I think there was a huge effort uh, at the very beginning of the crisis uh, from, from all uh, the countries. We have made with our SME envoys, these are our contact points in the, in the different member states, we have initiated the quick information exchange. Everybody was explaining what he is doing in his country to support uh, the companies during the lockdown. Uh, this was very useful as well. It instructed others. It gave examples. It gave inspiration. Um, we have also had uh, EU funds that we uh, were kind of uh, 
putting together and, uh, and uh, helping companies to get loans. So I think there was a lot of support out there, but uh, of course it was more probably targeted to the survival of companies. Um, in our SME strategy, we have actually provided for a lot of uh, support, access to finance for more long term. Also looking at the different needs of different companies. We've heard uh, companies are very heterogeneous. So we have uh, specific support measures for startups that need a different kind of support, I would say, than probably more traditional companies that need support for investments, making their businesses more sustainable and so on. And I think we have different means. Uh, I want to mention two products there, InvestEU. It has been mentioned already by Hubert Gams. Uh, this is um, a scheme by which uh, we give guarantees to banks so that banks uh, give loans or get the guarantee from, from us so that they give loans that they would normally consider to be too risky. And with this, we have already a very good experience. Uh, we are highly successful with this product and it's, it's very much uh, used. Uh, for startups, I would like to mention Escala. Uh, it's, uh, it's a first, uh, yeah, it's in the EU a kind of a unique tool where we want to provide this equity financing for, for startups and scale-ups, they have a bit different needs. But it's not just about access to finance, it's about also going global, uh, finding business partners somewhere else. I want to mention the European Enterprise Network. Uh, that is, uh, we have 600 uh, partners throughout the EU, uh, who, um, where you have uh, local contact points that give advice on business models, on the best way to get access to finance, also uh, finding business partners. And I think this is something extremely important. Uh, as an entrepreneur, you have to know what you can do yourself, and probably sometimes you need partners. This is this togetherness. Uh, um, so there's also this support out there. So uh, overall, and there are lots of things that I can mention, but um, yeah, uh, I leave it for here for the moment. <laughs> Thank you very much, Birgit uh, Weidel. for a, a good way of wrapping up today's session. And uh, thank you also everyone who has contributed online and on site. And uh, um, I'm calling again uh, here Moitza Mavet to weave us into what comes next. Thank you. Marita, ladies, thank you so much, and good luck to all the contributors as well. Um, now it's just my task to invite you to join in for four other sessions. So um, here in the Europa Convention Hall, we have a policy workshop called Shifting Sands, New Opportunities for Family-Run Tourism. In the Emerald II, there is a policy workshop for empowering girls and women through entrepreneurial and digital competencies, the role of SMEs in place-based uh, industrial policies, in cooperation with the Econ Commission of the Committee of the Regions, um, so this is in the ML2, and in the Mediterranean, Mediterranean, we have another policy workshop on the roles of SMEs in place-based industrial policies. And then lastly, in the Emerald, we will be discussing the mission to restore our ocean and waters by 2030. What's in it for SMEs? So for those of you joining us online, you will be able to watch the sessions in a virtual room and take part in a virtual cleanup of a polluted beach. But in order to do so from your device, you will need to download a new, a separate Engage platform before joining the online session. So instructions for how to do that, and join us um, is this, uh, enjoy this innovative online experience can be found on the workshop description and agenda on the platform. I think it's, it's a very, very exciting platform. So we are uh, somehow learning uh, new, new things as well in the technical part. Uh, the Assembly has, uh, app has all the details uh, and information you need on each session, plus those starting at 15 and 15. And all I can do now is just wish you an interesting and productive afternoon and hope to see you later at 4 o'clock, 4.15 for some tea.